Hi everyone, welcome to Miss Adams Teaches Poetry. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Adelstrop by Edward Thomas. I'm going to take you through five major points from the poem, looking at some quotes, analysing language structure and form. So let's get started. Okay, so looking at the very first line of the poem, yes, I remember Adelstrop. Now, the first thing you'll probably notice is that we're beginning in media res, so right in the midst of things. It almost feels like someone has asked him a question um, and this is actually the response to it. Or alternatively, there's a kind of intensity about the use of yes here, um, suggesting to us from word go that Adelstrop as a place or a name or a memory is particularly significant and important to him. You'll notice that we have Caesura in this moment, uh, again, creating that sort of sense of intensity, that little pause. And then the following declarative sentence almost uh, qualifies what that yes is all about. I remember Adelstrop. And then he goes on to explain that it is because one afternoon of heat, the express train drew up there unwantedly. It was late June. OK, so what we have here, we've got a real kind of focus on time in particular. Um, so we've we've already talked about the fact that this happened on a particular day in June in, in the previous video. Uh, but he's sort of cemented it, it that afternoon of heat. Note the way that the enjambement in the poem, in the lines here, uh, puts focus on this phrase of heat. Uh, the express train drew up there unwantedly. Now, this adverb here, unwantedly, means unusually. OK, so it's telling us that this was a, a sort of surprise. You know, this was a surprise, this moment. So it's almost like it was this little moment of peace that was gifted to him because they weren't meant to be there. And again, we've got another temporal marker after our caesura here. Um, suggesting this, um, yeah, it was late June, so telling us something a little bit about the context, again, the date being so important, six, six weeks before World War One broke out. And note the way that it draws attention back to uh, this phrase here, afternoon of heat. There's almost like a sense of it being quite oppressive in this, in this moment. Um, which might be symbolic of that kind of sense of pressure and fear that Edward Thomas was feeling around the time. We've got some absolutely wonderful sensory descriptions here, and it's all about creating this moment, this moment of silence, this pause in time. So we've got the beautiful sibilance in the steam hiss. And again, it's not about ooh, connotations of uh, please don't say connotations of snakes, whatever you do. Uh, it's more about creating such a vivid image for us, allowing us to imagine the silence being broken by these very subtle sounds, the steam hissing and then someone cleared his throat. Um, note again, we've got Cazura. So. In this line, we've actually got these two simple declarative sentences with this wonderful little pause. Again, just emphasising the silence in the poem and this kind of sense of um, um, sense of peace, I suppose. There's also a real focus on isolation here. You can see this from the repetition of no one. OK, no one left and no one came. There's a nice juxtaposition here, um, you know, the coming and goings of people. Um, and the platform is bare. So again, this adjective is suggesting um, real isolation, like emptiness and solitude. But it's not a bad solitude. Bearing in mind we're in a train station, a kind of place of industry. We know Edward Thomas was um, very much inspired by the Romantic poets of the previous century. Um, and so there is almost perhaps the, tr the train station is all about a sort of symbol of modernity. But the fact that it's empty gives him this opportunity to take stock and to appreciate the world around him. And then he tells us what he saw. From the, literally, he's in the train, he's looking out the window. What I saw was Adelstrop. Only the name, 
Now, only the name, this bit here, it's re referencing the sign. So you didn't actually see any part of the city. It was just the name of it, the sign at the train station um, that, that stayed in his mind. Look at the enjambement here between only the name and then the next stanza. And, and willows, willow herb and grass and meadow sweet and haycocks dry. So we've got this beautiful enjambement that places emphasis on all of these aspects of nature, which is built into a semantic field because we've got willows, we've got willow herb, which is a wild flower, grass, meadow sweet, haycocks dry. So what we have here in this semantic field and the use of anaphora is we're creating a sense of abundance in nature and that is also demonstrated through the the listing um, you'll notice that uh, the it, we're largely looking at syndetic listing here just with this exception um, so we've got lots of connectives lots of repetition of the connective and so again we've got this notion of um, nature being ever present uh, and vast and varied and very beautiful and I think that is the point it's the it's this moment of understanding and appreciating the beauty in nature again think back to his influences uh, being the romantic poets so our final piece to look at is the the last stanza of the poem apologies for putting in an entire stanza i know that you wouldn't quote the entire thing in your paragraphs you just pick out the little bits that you needed but i quite, i sort of wanted to have the context of the whole section so and for that minute a blackbird sang close by and round him mistier further and further all the birds of oxfordshire and gloucestershire so we've got this adverbial of time given to us here and for that minute uh, which really draws attention to how how quick how speedy this moment was they were only at the station for a minute but the point is is that even though it was just this tiny space in time the impact it had on him was incredibly profound and it's a real moment of joy as well as we understand that he hears the the blackbird sing uh close by and round him mistia now mistia is an interesting um comparative adjective to use here because it suggests a certain level of um of things being obscured or unclear um it but it's actually almost like all of the birds because we're, we're moving from this small moment to something much more profound and so it's almost like the the sky is filling um, and that is also emphasized through the repetition of further and further all the birds of Oxfordshire and Gloucestershire so we've got this hyperbole here because obviously not all the birds are singing but in that moment that's how it feels that nature has united in this incredibly beautiful and sort of glorious moment um, that he has yeah been gifted um, because of this unwanted um, stop in the train station now what makes this so powerful and so poignant is that this is six weeks before World War One began. We know that he was anxious. We know that he was worried about enlisting. And I almost feel that in this moment, it's like finding those moments of peace in order to be able to cope with the world around. And then what makes that more poignant is the fact that, of course, he then died um, in 1917 on the battlefield uh, before this poem was even published. And on that rather sad note, we'll stop. <laughs> um, I hope that was helpful. If you've got any questions or you'd like me to go through any of the lines that I've not covered in this PowerPoint, do just drop me a line in the comments and I will come back to you. Thank you very much if you've subscribed to the channel already. And if you haven't, do click that button and then you'll get notifications of when the rest of the poems are ready for you. That's it from me. Thank you again. Happy revising.